Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. And in this particular video, I want to talk about how you can play the game in such a way that you're increasing the fun factor of it. Now, fun is obviously subjective, but the way I would see it is that you want a campaign that's exciting. So it does provide some level of challenge, but not, uh, not descending into frustration which it can certainly do so. A lot of games can do so, especially on high difficulties. But Total War is such a game that playing on a high difficulty can be a great deal of fun, but also incredibly frustrating, dependent on how you're doing it. If you're a min-maxer, this video is not for you. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people, oh, this is cheating, or that's cheating, or you shouldn't play like this, to which I reply. Min-maxing a game can be fun at times, but it can also be incredibly frustrating. So anyway... With that in mind, let's talk about difficulty. What difficulty should you play the game at? Well, in terms of campaign difficulty, I would say either very hard or legendary. If you're annoyed by not being able to quick save, if you're annoyed by not being able to manual save, yes, set it to very hard. But if you don't mind that too much, I would set it on legendary because the AI gets a bit more advantages on legendary versus very hard. And you do want the AI to pose a decent level of challenges, especially in the mid-late game where things can get really easy and tedious because the AI on lower campaign difficulties is going to struggle to keep up with you. If you're playing at any decent skill level. Now, in terms of battle difficulty, this is where it can fluctuate a lot. Now, this might sound very annoying, but you can actually enjoy a campaign a great deal if you're playing around with this meter constantly. So I would say maybe the early turns you set in something too easy and you're just not resolving a lot of the early game battles. But then later on, as you want to encounter more and more challenges, as you're building a massive empire, you might want to set it this to very hard. Now, campaign difficulty affects AI benefits, but what does battle difficulty affect? Beyond, obviously, various benefits the AI gets in terms of auto-resolve and battles, affects AI aggressiveness, because the AI is going to feel that it has better odds at taking settlements. Now, interestingly enough, regardless of how we change battle difficulty, of course, the AI would always win or lose the same battles, regardless of that, against another AI faction, but it is interesting to see how affecting a change in battle difficulty affects AI behavior. So, for instance, if you're starting a campaign well, it's generally very hard, and Akari is going to very quickly, very easily take Crace. If you start at a lower battle difficulty, regardless of what the campaign difficulty is, Nakari will take Tora Share, the provincial capital, much slower. So just bear that in mind. Affect the changing battle difficulty from easy to very hard is going to affect how quickly the AI is going to gain territory. And the AI gaining territory quickly affects its strength. I would say that Total War right now is very front, uh, front-ended front or really front-heavy in the sense that a lot of the challenge, a lot of the difficulty that you have in a campaign is early on. By lowering the battle difficulty in the campaign early on, you might have a much easier early game, but then increasing it later on will give you a, a harder and more interesting mid-late game. Pers uh, there's plenty of people, I imagine, who would probably want to set it to normal. I would say that setting it easy just so you don't have to fight a bunch of pointless, meaningless battles might be the best thing for you to do. Alright, now, as you start the campaign, you're probably going to want to engage in diplomacy. But before we get into that, let's talk about it about mods. There's plenty of mods I'd recommend. There's a whole video I've done on that. I'm going to list the mods that I would recommend using in every campaign in the game at the moment. They're not overhauls. They're not things like SFO. And I honestly don't like SFO all that much because SFO is a successor to basically SFO for Warhammer 3 is based on SFO for Warhammer 2. And Warhammer 2 is a far more limited game. Warhammer 3 is not so limited. So what I dislike about SFO, it feels like it's more limited at least in terms of empire building in a campaign which i personally don't appreciate there's certainly some nice things about it but i don't like uh, many overhauls in a lot of ways but of the mods like you can use something like toggle fog of war now you can use this to cheat sure but you can also use it just to look around on turn one and see your situation like say hey you're at war with the cult of excess but zafri also has a slanishy corruption issue and so you're likely going to want to deal with them then you have Valerial, who can be one of your strong allies, but she's at war with the Scourge of Cain. Then you have Nakari to the north. Elfarian has some greenskins to deal with, and so on and so forth. 
that's what I'd use Tackle Fog of War. Other mods that I'd recommend would be the Warband Upgrade System, which is a great mod because it means you don't have to disband units just because they're lower tier. You can just upgrade them to a higher tier. Keep in mind there are certainly some pitfalls uh, with using a mod like this because you can recruit, you can upgrade units to a higher tier, but you may not be able to afford them in a campaign. So just be aware of what may happen in a campaign if you're doing something like this. Uh, and then finally, another mod I'd recommend beyond the Out Resolve Quest Battles or One Button Reset Skill would be a mod that removes the, diff uh, the public order penalty on a high difficulty because it genuinely is just annoying. It's not a challenge. Some people will disagree with that, but it's not a challenge dealing with that. In fact, you may want to spark rebellions on Legendary deliberately because rebellions are experienced, they're money, they're influence in the case of the High Elves. I'm using Tyrion's campaign here because Tyrion is the campaign I'd recommend for anyone that's starting to play the game. It's a good campaign with a good Legend and Lord, good starting, a good starting situation and fairly easy starting situation as well. So those are the kind of mods I would recommend. There's plenty of others that are going to be listed in the description below. But okay, once you start a campaign, you may want to just start with easy battle difficulty. In fact, you can play an entire campaign with easy battle difficulty, though it won't really be too challenging. The and the first thing you want to do is start engaging in diplomacy. So over here, I'm just going to declare war on the Scourge of Cain because yes. I know they're not really going to be much of a challenge uh, for me. You need me? I will receive then I'm going to go to Illyrian and declare war on Terranok as well for even as more money. Terranok is not going to attack me. Uh, on top of that, I may also want to go to Elfarian once I meet him to declare war on the Greenskins he starts at war with. No now, here's mercy. the thing about lowering the battle difficulty. Every campaign will have some initial battles. You cannot resolve some of, uh, some of them in some campaigns, but you're going to take significantly higher casualties. By lowering the battle difficulty, you're making the auto resolve much easier for you. So it means you don't have to fight a bunch of these pointless, meaningless battles, and you can just go here and auto resolve them. What this means in practice, so people are aware, what this really means in practice is that while Art Resolve is never uh, the best thing you can do in a campaign, even on a difficulty like this, what it really means is that you are going to be able to, uh, you're, you're going to be able to Art Resolve a, a lot of these battles without having to go in them. So you're not wasting minutes of your life dealing with a bunch of battles that you would win anyway it isn't challenging now over here i'm gonna get the noble it's good to get heroes as quickly as possible but i'm actually gonna cancel these buildings and invoke a right because this is gonna give me control and construction cost benefit and then i'm going to get these structures i can also recruit a lord and one of the things you can do is Start a campaign on easy easy just to get a bunch of lords saved up and load them for the system. This will help your campaign in a pretty good way as it will allow you access to lords with good trades as opposed to just having to waste your freaking time dealing with that on your own. I'm gonna get Root Marcher. In terms of leveling a lord, I'd say getting campaign movement range and inspiring presence for the most part is the best way to go and also increasing magic skill. And then, of course, our research, in this case, archery prowess for high elves. So I'm recruiting a couple of units over here. One other thing I could do in this situation would be to declare war on, say, Kalidor. Let's just go to Noctilus, declare war. Might be worth it, might allow me to recruit a third archer. But at the end of the turn, I'm going to set the campaign difficulty back to very hard because I want the AI to expand more aggressively. Now, should you recruit a second lord on turn one? It depends on the campaign. Because in some campaigns you can certainly afford and you may want to do uh, so to take advantage of global recruitment. Also, a second lord may allow you to also take territory while your army keeps moving from settlement to settlement. In this case, I can take uh, the port potentially over there, assuming I can move Tyrion quickly enough. But I might not be able to in this case.
So let's take a look. All right, in this case, I can uh, absolutely do so, but not worth it. So instead, I'm just going to move Tyrion over here and get some more archers over here. Each race has one unit you want to recruit early on in a campaign. In the case of the High Elves, the unit you want to recruit uh, recruit our archers with light armor. Now, I still don't have vision Speak. over... You called? Protect. Welcome, fellow Asur. Very well. Now, I still don't have vision yeah, over there, over... What um, do you seek from the Asur, Travis? How wise. Prince Elthar. Have you come to help me? Over Eltharian, so I'm going to get it if through... Not, leave. My solemn... I must... Uh, for taste. diplomacy. By getting a bunch of trade agreements with a bunch of different factions. So now I have a bunch of trade agreements, which is always beneficial for the High Elves because a lot of their economy is dependent on trade. Bear in mind, I could have moved against this port had I not been globally recruiting with units over there. Uh, but because I decided, you know, what, getting those units is more important than anything else, I'm just going to be a bit slower with uh, respect to this. But I'll still be able to take this element very, very quickly with Tyrion and then deal with other things in this campaign as well pretty quickly. Alright, so I've reached rank 2. I'm not going to get the main economic building built up. Can I offer assistance? Over here, I'm going to move Tyrion to take that element. Now, I am going to sack there this element. The reason I want to sack this element is it will give me more money. And it is a rank 2 settlement, so I wouldn't be able to uh, keep it at level 2 anyway. But first, I'm going to move this lord over here with the two archers he globally recruited. It would have been ideal to get free, of course. And now... I can fight this battle and not resolve it. Now I could fight them manually, waste time, spend 10 minutes of my life just doing a battle that I know I'm going to win, or I can do something like this. And just auto resolve it and then move the arm over here to take it over. That's what we we're going to do. Tyrion is going to move over here and he is going to recruit more units. And I am going to recruit a healer, uh, hero. I could recruit a noble that has a bad trait, a negative trait, or I can just use the soul to save load characters. Frugal is a pretty good trait there. There are certainly some traits better than others. Now, people don't like using that system. They view it as cheating, but honestly, like, that's not the point of this video. Like, if you want to bother about that, uh, if you care so much about that, that's on you. And now, since I can't increase the noble capacity for a while, I'm just going to get rid of this structure. And uh, soon enough, I'm also going to get rid of this barracks over here as well. Because I'm going to build it in the Shrine of Assyrian. So Tyrion now is gonna, at 17 units, and he's going to get more as well. And now I'm just going to set the battle difficulty back to where it was, because I actually want Alariel and Elfarian to do things faster in Got their it. own campaigns. I'm listening. Your best. Okay. Another thing what I could also do here is field, go to Krace King. and declare war on Nakari. But I'm going to wait for them to get more money before I decide to do that. By the way, this is a situation, a perfect situation, where the public order penalty removal, while overall it does lead to less frustration in campaign it would have actually been more beneficial for me to get to spark a rebellion deliberately so i could have gained more money also the ai is just being stupid by moving its heroes outside of its army because obviously they would have presented a bigger challenge had they kept them inside of that army right there Your behest? now over here we're going to get the plaza and we're going to take over that settlement. What do you require? Setting the pace. I am a fount of knowledge. That was a bit of a bad decision on my part, but I'm going to move this lord. A strong leader is needed. This is a pretty substantial garrison, all things considered. Champion of the ever but it is obviously something I'll be able to win. As I said, though I will lose the spearmen, 
do the same thing again. It might be annoying to do it if you just want to completely reduce the level of frustration. Um, I'm just going to loot and occupy it for a bit more money. And now I'm going to set it to level 2. I'm going to get rid of this one building and I'm going to move Tyrion over here so you can go take uh, Karen Fail and sell that to Alfarian. Once Alfarian starts to decide that he. Uh, the, uh, once Elfarian does decide he wants to move south. I could also move against Safari, of course. Trained by the White Tower. And for him, I'm going to get Inspiring Presence and Bowmaster. And I actually have enough uh, money to... What is it? It is necessary. Defend your... Let's hear it. I have enough money to do some more global recruitment, which I will do so with archers. Get those archers. The key here is to understand what the limits of your economy are and how far you can push those limits. That's, I would say, the most important thing in any campaign. You don't want to go bankrupt, but you also don't want to sit on a massive pile of cash not doing anything with it. Though in certain campaigns, it might be a beneficial... Um, stance to take that okay i have an army but i can't really afford to maintain a second army from the start of the campaign i'm not going to get enough money to be able to build all the structures i want get to se get the second army maintain a second army so you might just decide not to bother really in the course of that campaign And I've already reached a point where I can just auto-resolve these battles and not worry too much about it. I will consider Ennis. Prince of Elf One. Give the word. What is it? Now I can't sell this ter the territory to uh, to Elfarian. Here I'm gonna get um Wind Blast, actually. Yeah, I get a bit of every skill here. And get more archers as well. I'm getting archers because I don't know if I'm going to get a barracks anytime soon there. And here I am just going to increase the level over here. Or I could get a higher settlement level over here for that particular settlement. There is a major army waiting for me there. I am the bright flower of the goddess. The time is and get the defensive alliance with her. Always look at your diplomatic choices over here Let in a campaign. Give the word. Now I could actually take over this entire province before Elfarian can react. And that might be the better thing for me because that means Elfarian will have to be focused on the entire situation in his province as opposed to wandering around doing a uh, fuck all. But the downside is, uh, in a lot of campaigns in doing so, is that this would mean that I have to protect it. And we might have Beastmen, we might have Ikeclaw coming for us. There are, of course, uh, issues. Now, that's the defeated Legendary, uh, recruit defeated Legendary Lords mod. The benefit of that particular mod, beyond you being able to confederate certain that's defeated Legendary Lords, Shield of Alaria. Uh, the particular benefit of that uh, cam uh, that um, mechanic. Bring me battle. Claim anything of value. Protector of the Everclear. Uh, is that or that particular mod? Lord the man. the benefit there. Noctilus is moving through my turf, which is pretty annoying. Now over here, I kind of want to wait, because I want to wait until I can get this to tier 3. I could obviously get another structure there. I could have delayed getting the barracks. Get more replenishment. And when you get your legendary lord to level... Um, to a certain enough level, in this case I'm going to use the right for more casualty replenishment, once you get your legendary lord to a certain uh, level, I'm sure over here I'm going to switch to more recruitment capacity. 
because I want to get more units. Uh, once you get your Legendary Lord to, like, say, level 7, or maybe earlier, dependent on the Legendary Lord, but for most, it's like their special skill line is unlocked at level 12, you want to stop spending skill points and save them up so you can unlock their entire special skill line in a single go. Now, bear in mind that there is going to be a price for what I just decided to do. The price is going to be that uh, Alarial might just take, take Safra over here faster than me, which wouldn't be an ideal scenario. I will weigh what you have to say and the merit of your actions. Now, I could also sell this territory to a Alfarian and get a defensive alliance with him, but I kind of don't want to. Because if Nakari does move through his territory, like, if you sell territory to the AI, the AI will, um, will keep its army there. Kalidor has been wiped out. We get the quest okay. bow. Not really in a hurry for that. And now let's go take the Shrine of Lovak. I'm just gonna occupy it. Don't want to spark a rebellion just yet. I will hear you. I promise no more than that. Can I loyal servant? What and that faction got me? wiped out. You need me? Get some cross, uh, some uh, spearmen. As you quest battles are a great way to gain a huge amount of money. Just bear in mind that not all quest battles are equal. Some quest battles are so difficult that you won't be able to do them until later on in the campaign. I mean, granted, you can probably win a lot of the quest battles even earlier in a campaign, but not necessarily the best course of action. Over here, I'm just going to repair this building to improve my income. And I might get a rebellion happening here. I would certainly have gotten it with the, without the public order penalty Welcome, mod brothers. removal. What do you wish to discuss? I'm not going to join that war against Safari just Yeah, that's the downside. I may not claim all of Safari before Alarial decides to do it. She certainly will be able to defeat their main army before I get there. But look at this situation, right? I save myself a lot of time by just not uh, fighting some of these battles um, of the Ever Queen. I never tire. manually. And now I can move my force over here. Lethal grace given forth. And their army in this situation. N now I can oh, go to well, Alarial, get some money for declaring war against Safri. Bit of money, gifts. not necessarily too Your much. Trust. Let's hear it. And this army should be able to deal with it. If not, the need. It is ours now. if not, no issue. But Tyrion is going to come in, and their army to the north there is not going to be able to intervene here before um, before I wipe them out. Now here I'm going to wait a bit so I can get Lawfern itself to a higher level. And I'm actually just going to repair this building to have it operating at full capacity. May we both serve Don't know what Elfarian is going to do, but I kind of clipped his wing, so to speak. Now, Safiri's army might decide to attack Alarial. That would be the best thing in my situation, because that would prevent her from taking Torfino or slow her down enough that she wouldn't attack uh, Torfino. I can also prevent her myself by just swapping the difficulty here. Though that would be a bit of a cheese, right? Now I get the defensive alliance with Alarian. And let's see what Safiri ends up doing. Nothing.
keep developing those economic buildings, and Tyrion will not be able to attack Safari there. But I I will manage to take the White Tower before Alariel. That's the important bit. Just by putting it under siege, I prevent her from attacking there. I haven't fought the quest battle just yet, but I'm not really... But I obviously don't want to take the casualties. When you decide to fight the quest battles is actually a pretty major uh, decision in your campaign. Because timing it just right is actually pretty damn important. The quest battle that Tyrion has in this particular case is not really too big of a deal. Loyal servant. Magic in purest... Now, even though Alariel will take Torfinu, I can get it back by marching all the way to all the way through her territory, through the Phoenix Gate, uh, and and taking it, um, uh, taking it for myself. Now, we have a Nakari that's taken two entire provinces over here. And obviously, Nakari is going to be a bit of an issue. But I'm going to want to deal with uh, with Safari in this context. Now, your legendary lords always have Siege Attacker. So in this case, if I wanted to take this element, I just pull back over here, Centurion. Uh, Centurion, though, that will obviously consume all of his movement points. It shall be done. There is glory to be won. Take Keep in mind, however, I don't want uh, to burn this element to the ground. Instead, I'm just going to move this army over here so we can recruit more units. I can also sell... Um, some of this territory to Ariel, get more archers. We got regiment turn out, and now would be probably the point where I can fight the quest pal. And just to not lose any unit, and to not have to fight them manually, really. I'm just going to lower the battle difficulty. And that's it. Malekith is destroyed, got a lot of influence, in a much better campaign situation, and just gonna enact some repairs here. Tyrion. And then move Tyrion back in the settlement. And now I'm gonna get the Majesty of Wolf one. Because while the bloodline of Anarian does certainly buff his uh, ability in combat, it is just better to get the Majesty of Wolf one because of the various campaign benefits that it does provide. So now I've established myself a pretty strong early game. And oh look, I saved myself a lot of time by not having to fight a bunch of battles manually. Ten turns already. I'm gonna get... Um, with hero upgrades, like if it's a mage, obviously you upgrade uh, their... Um, you upgrade their magical ability. Actually over here I think I'm gonna get some growth. Um, if it's a mage, you obviously upgrade their magical ability. If it's a melee hero, you want to upgrade their survivability. Not their damage. You want their survivability because you want them to be a tank and distract uh, portions of the enemy army. Now, we see that Noctilus is coming for me here. But he's not going to have such an easy time taking my territory. Because I obviously have this army over here. He might march on the Tower of Lycian. So I might just want to cancel that until I'm certain that I can stop him. Alright, so Alariel is now at war with Nakari. Avres might soon be at war with Nakari. And there I get such major benefits on Legendary that... Okay, Noctilus. Rising. But it's not really an issue. Not a major one, anyway. I'm just going to move that army over there from uh, from the port into the settlement. Though one of the ways to avoid this situation is just not getting those kind of defensive alliances with those minor factions, especially with minor factions. Major factions are rarely going to attack another major faction unless they have a, a significant advantage. 
Great powers the world. Shield against the darkness. I serve the king. Setting up Gareth. Over your dead. And now we're just gonna get some archers. Alariel's champion. I am ready to fight. And more Vanguard. influence. And now Noctilus is the main uh, threat that I have to deal with in this campaign. But he really isn't much of a threat. People ask me, how do I manage to win a campaign within 60 turns? Well, it's doing things like this, playing a campaign like this. Because look at the situation, right? I've got three entire freaking provinces. Almost. <laughs> the issue that exists over here being obviously a bit of a problem. But I do have free provinces, right? Ready or almost serve. free provinces. Let's get more uh, more casual here replenishment. And now I'm just gonna march on Noctilus and defeat him. Even my secondary army here could probably defeat his main one. But how is that? Pretty simple to understand. His army is pathetic. Specifically, his army is very vulnerable against... Uh, Okay. His army is pretty vulnerable against mass ranged units. Guess what I have. All this pays off to understand the strengths and weaknesses of your particular faction. Now, of course, Noctilus is a bit of a pain in the neck because you do have he does have the Galleon's graveyard, but my secondary army is more than capable of going to deal with that because it's not really a proper settlement battle, and even if it was, I'd still be able to win with that. This is why it pays off to ag uh, recruit aggressively. That's not a great situation. And now look at this situation. As you command. For my queen, your will is done. I know I was going to end up in a war with Noctilus. It is a shame that my settlement level was reduced here, sure. But he's not going to be able to stop me. The only thing I'm going to save here by doing this is just time. My prowess is I mean, it is a battle I'd win anyway, right? So. Pillage anything of value. That would be it. And now the sweeping action can begin, where we drive him out of Kalidor, and over here I get more archers, and set up the grove again. Now bear in mind, this is certainly one of the easier campaign starts in the game, but even if you don't have such an easy start, gonna get more, uh, more upgrades there, but even if you don't have such an easy start here, as in this campaign situation, you can do this pretty much in virtually every campaign. Not all of them. Keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna get Lizard Man Affairs because I do want to start. I do want to get a better relation with Mazda Mundi there. Now here, there might be the risk of a rebellion. I will hear you. And I'm gonna get a no defense more. alliance with Alfarian. Serene. What and between Alfarian and um, and between Alfarian and um, and others, uh, Alfarian and Alarial, they should be able to deal with that. Now I'm gonna recruit him, uh, even though he's not that great. He is still counted as a legendary lord for whatever reason. And I'm gonna spend quite a bit of the money recruiting units with him. And we're gonna use Wall's Anvil to get an item. What item? Well, there's different dis decisions over here. I think Wing Boots. No, let's just get the Chest of Sustenance nice. and give it to him. Because he's also gonna be dealing with some attrition. And that's gonna reduce my upkeep by quite a bit. 
And in point of fact, I might want to increase local recruitment capacity and take back Kalidor. Tyrion can deal with everything here. Alistair is just basically going to be coming in as a backup. Now, of course, you know, I did cheat in one way, or in a major way in this campaign. Not in any of the mods or lowing battle difficulty, but because I know exactly what's going to happen in this campaign. I know Alariel is always going to declare war on Safari. That way, I can avoid having to fight Safari's main army if I declare war at the opportune time. I know Elfarian is always going to want to take that province from the Greenskins. Now, he might have taken a settlement by the time I arrived there, but it would have been fine. I could have. I could have actually taken all of Safri for myself if I wasn't taking over the settlement. To victory. So These we lay siege. I and we win. We have captured it. Ulf ones defend. Now over here, what I am going to produce is actually a growth uh, building. Generally, the High Elves do have good, good growth, but sometimes you do get these kind of situations where you really want to improve that. And now we're going to go for uh, Noctilus's recruitment ability. Let's upgrade the Tower of Lycian. By having those quest battles dealt with early on, I've gained a significant amount of money that now I'm going to use to my advantage. And for Tyrion here, we're gonna get Rally. Ward of Loic. Now, some campaigns are deliberately slower early on. Like, for instance, Alariel's camp early, early campaign can be a bit slower. Though this is 13 turns, uh, and I certainly have accomplished a great deal over here. The goal of this army is to deal with the Galleon Graveyard, which is over there. What order? And from those, this point onward, it's like everything else is sorted out pretty much. I'll make, I'll go down the long route around, so to speak. Um, I'll eventually send my fleet after they take the Galleon Graveyard. I'll send them to the north through Alarial territory. My armies will converge on Nakari. I'll give Nakari's territory to, I don't know, Elfarian or something along those lines. And I'll go deal with Morafi, go deal with uh, with uh, Nagrond, and I've established a very strong camp in a pretty quick um, in a pretty quick uh, a huge amount of time. Champion that is a bit. Queen. Yeah, I think that's a bit bugged, really. It's probably because of the mods, Sir, really. The <laughs> I'll be honest. Your uh, there is glory mods are not perfect. To the victor, the spoil. Now here I might want a deliberate rebellion, or maybe not. Let's get some growth. Now here I'm gonna go the long way around, because if I land here... Uh, I'll just take attrition for one turn with no real benefit to it, to show for it. I serve the king. So Alistair is just going to keep recruiting units. Um, going to get favorable wins over here. I do prefer buffing the army as opposed to buffing the lord. It's just the mentality I have. Let your words be true. When do we fight? Burn the coast. Now I could get the peace agreement, but wiping him out completely is probably the better decision. And who knows? Maybe Elfarian will deal with all that. Will the, the entire problem over there? When did that be aside? Now I guess I want to leave Illyrian to deal with these settlements and just move uh, for the capital, sell it to Illyrian. Or I could take the gate, or I could take the settlement here, then take the capital myself and then buy the settlement next turn for the by selling the gate especially 
to Alarian and eventually confederate them. Okay. Have a loyal. Your orders are reasonable. Sailing now it's pretty annoying. For order. The Asur follows straight. Claim what is ours. Okay. Repair that, but don't bother with anything else. Gonna get trade tariffs here and not even gonna collect income. Lord of the Phoenix Court. Into position. Occupy this place. At your service. And I am going to move Stop Alistair here. over here to the edge of territory over here. Orders. To recruit more units. While he certainly has a special skill line focused on the White Lions of Craze, the White Lions, like, you don't want to focus too many, uh, you don't want to get too many of them. Certainly not at this point in the campaign. Now at this point, and now at this stage, I could get a mage, but there's no real uh, value in that. As for cultural advancement, let's not, let's talk about that. You need an elven court as well. So getting the Shrine of Asurian at this point is not really beneficial because the elven court is there. Let's get the resource building. For the prince here, get the same uh, skill line, because that's going to reduce upkeep for those units. Still have that army over there. Vampires have a nasty habit of, of surviving auto resolve situations with some of their units. And the Sisters of Twilight have a nasty habit, habit of raising the bleak coast to the ground, even though it's a great province that you could really take advantage of if you could take it over yourself. This is the reason I want to wipe, wipe them out, generally. Don't ask me about the garrison here, because it's nonsensical to the freaking extreme. Not sure what Delariel is going to be doing here. Hopefully she will manage to take some territory there beyond the gate. I'm going to need to move Alistair north though. Eventually. And now, looking at the situation, I have three entire armies. Ready to march. Now I can then march north. Orders. He's just going to spend one more turn recruiting. Tyrion is going to move here to deal with this element. And we're going to get Trumpeters. And my economy keeps growing. The cyst I'm waiting. At your serve. Itching for fresh battle. You have proven yourself an enemy of the forest. In other words, Ariel's will. Twin. Look, I am in a black. Mood. And let's declare war on some beastmen that no one that are not going to yes. pose any kind of level of Serene challenge to me. Nestra, More money. It's always nice to have. Don't know what the Alfarian is doing here. Don't know what the Lariel is doing even. But you kind of want them to take, you don't want them to take a lot of territory, because if they take a lot of territory, it's actually going to be more difficult to confederate them. Like, that's the key to confederation. If you want to confederate a faction, you need good relations with them, so you probably have to give them some territory. But at the same time, you don't want them to gain too much territory. And also, if they lose a lot of their army, so if you give them territory, make sure you're giving them territory where they're at war with someone else, because they will inevitably lose troops. That is what's going to make your life easier with respect to confederating them and obviously gaining power in that particular uh, situation. All right, so over here, um, ready to serve. 
He's gonna move to the side here. We're gonna get rid of that. Switch to growth and construction costs. Or did I go too far? Maybe I did. No, it's not. It's just not built, is it? Now, if you encounter a situation like this, attacking the army outside of the settlement is always the better idea. For a couple of reasons. One, you might be able to out-resolve the battle outside of the settlement, which will completely eliminate the garrison. So you don't have to deal with a fucking siege battle. Two, you'll get post-battle loot. So, for instance, here, yeah, I'll just occupy the settlement, but I've already gotten the post-battle loot from the settlement itself. There's the advantage there. Like, I wouldn't have been able to out-resolve the battle in the settlement there, but I've been able... But I was able to not resolve the battle outside of the settlement. And then the, isn't that the thing? Now, of course, I am pushing my economy to the brink, etc., etc., etc. Most astute. I will see to it. Journeying on. And now we move north. Public order won't be too much of an issue, thanks Master to the mod that magic. I've got there. I do want to get towards Renel. She should be able to. She should be willing to uh, treat her finna for towards Renel over here. Especially if I can get it within two uh, within two turns, because that. Uh... <laughs> but effectively, this campaign is finished. By dealing with the skull crag before Elfarian could move over there, then it meant that Elfarian's entire efforts were focused on Nakari, so Elfarian just defeated Nakari on his own. On legendary, very hard difficulty. Nakari, who is generally a major bloody nuisance. Take this as a campaign guide for Tyrion if you want. The only difference is, of course, is that you would have to fight some, like, if you don't want to use the cheese, quote unquote, of battle difficulty to. Avoid having to fight some battles. To be fair, I want to mention this. To be very, very clear on something. Generally speaking, it is the smarter decision to fight battles. Like, generally speaking, it's the smarter decision to fight battles manually. The reason for that is because fighting battles manually will give you more, uh, will generally give you better results. Then even the Ot resolve on easy will, let alone something on very hard battle difficulty. When do we fight? Only when necessary. Let's go to these what guys and the declare one on the bleak holds. Why not? Their gilded towers. Yes, agree. The sisters of twilight. And then we upgrade this. You need me. Okay, that was not necessarily the wisest move in the book. Right there, but end the turn all the same. Though, what's concerning what's happening in the north, do I even need to go over there in the north? Probably not, so I think my army over there that's uh, on sea might want to just go for the Bleak Ghost and eliminate them. It might have also been the Beastmen that uh, burned their settlement to the ground. So I may just deploy these two stacks over here to uh, to deal with Morafi. Yes, Morafi is worth... Oof, those Beastmen, holy crap, man. They're doing damage. Let's besiege this. I will lead the we will drive you out. We take on the gate, Lord and we can sell this to Elarion. What request would you make of the Phoenix King? But they wouldn't want to trade it. Of course, they wouldn't want to trade it. Tyrant. It's a good. It's a crap settlement versus a, an actual good settlement. Let's see about Torfino. I am ready. All are welcome in my court. 
Oh, she's willing to make that trade, at least. Serving the gods. Twi That's good. Black -hearted. And yeah, so this is how you get... Uh, this is how you have more fun in a campaign, by not having to fight a bunch of the pointless, meaningless, uh, worthless battles in the campaign. And also building up a strong empire where you have a lot of resources to deal with the actual challenges. Because the actual challenges are Marafi, Malekith, Belakor, not the trash that you deal with in the first few turns. I think Alfarian might have been wiped out actually in this situation. No, 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 he, he survived. It's just this settlement got wiped out. Be sure you do not Valiant Fear. But that's all. Costine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and stay tuned for more. If you do enjoy the content, consider supporting me via PayPal or Patreon. Thank you all uh, that have shown support. I also appreciate the many messages of support that I've gotten. And, um, lately, especially. And I'll see you next time.